which race is better? And I'm gonna try to be as honest as possible because I know there's a lot of people out there who take this stuff very seriously. All right, so here we go. Oh, you gotta go with the 100 meter. I think it'll be fun over the next century to see if somebody can outrun Bolt's 958. Well, naturally, I think triathlons are a bit more impressive, but I ran the New York City Marathon and it was like the toughest thing I've ever done, so I do respect distance runners a lot. I think Daytona generally produces the best races. It's been a while since I've watched, but I do remember some great races. Oh, I used to always watch the seven furlong races on TV. It just feels like there's a more mature pacing to that race. And then finally, everybody draws these numbers and letters differently. So let's see if we agree on the correct way to do so. Why would you separate the two bubbles on the eight? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, you have to do it like the infinity symbol, like one continuous loop. The X, I do the one on the left, because you start in the top left corner and then you move your way to the right. Okay, so that's the correct A. What is that? This has to be a troll. No way people actually start with the bottom of the A. That looks so bad. And why would you start with the dot in the I? So people make the dot before they make the actual I? This is crazy. Okay, so that's the correct nine. And that's just like lazy. You don't have like a pronounced circle at the top. Okay, yeah, so I do the one on the left, so I guess I go counterclockwise with my O's. And then B. That's pretty much the same exact thing, so I don't really care. Which way is this girl swinging? Is she swinging towards the school, or is she facing us? Well, it's difficult to tell, and many people believe there's no right answer to this illusion. Actually, depending on what your brain wants to see, you should even be able to switch back and forth. Here, I'll even zoom it in a little bit to give you a better view. So this has been debated for a few years now, but definitive answers always seem to fall short. There have been attempts to find this playground on Google Maps and stuff, or to contact the original poster, but there's simply not enough data to accurately assess the video. After watching it a few times, I think she's swinging towards the school, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Men versus women. How are we different? Well, men have 50% more muscle mass than women, making them bigger and stronger, but women generally have stronger immunity to disease and infection. Men have 25% thicker skin than women to protect against injury, and women have about 10% higher body fat levels to support reproduction. Men tend to carry more fat in their midsections, while women carry fat in their hips and thighs. Men have slightly larger brains than women, though this doesn't correspond to intelligence. Men just have larger parts designated to survivability and reaction, whereas women have larger regions for emotion and language. Men generally feel warmer than women because they're larger and thus burn more calories at homeostasis. This is also why men have slightly faster metabolisms. Men also disproportionately commit about 80% of violent crime, and this is likely because of men's natural evolutionary tendency towards violence as a solution to problems. Because of this, women tend to outlive their male counterparts by about six years. So stay safe out there. These are the most controversial questions on the internet, so let's answer them. Do video games cause violence? Obviously not. Exposure to something bad doesn't equate to bad action. Like, if that was the case, then history class in school would be inciting violence. So dumb. What is the best way to cook a steak? Medium. Anything else is way too much or too little, I think. Although some nice steaks, I'd take medium rare. Way too many rare lovers. If you stack a lasagna on top of another lasagna, how many are there? I've seen this before. I think it would just be one lasagna, right? It's like if you stack two sandwiches and put them on top of each other, you have one big sandwich. All right, not surprising. What is this emoji? Is that not the prayer emoji? Is that a high five? Wow, more than expected, okay. Should children have phones? If you're watching Sambucha videos, then yes. Otherwise, probably not. All right. And then would you smash AI? Wow, this took a turn. But yes, of course. Nice. Everybody does these gestures differently, so let's see if we agree on the correct way to do so. What? Is this a debate? I thought the pinky and the thumb was universally accepted. I need an explanation to this one, I don't even get it. I like interlocking fingers, feels more intimate like that. I'll do the palm hold if I'm like holding a child's hand or something. I never thought about this, the peace sign? I don't really use it, but I guess outward. I've been told I do this weird because I do three like this. I don't even see it on here, so guessing not too many people do it this way. The middle finger is so corny. Thumb up makes it even worse, too. I keep my thumb pointed up. It's too much effort the other way. Like, if I'm punching, though, maybe I'd assume this form, but otherwise I keep it up. And then a flick. I flick with my ring finger. I think it's the most powerful for me. 
I always want to keep it real with you guys, and so here are some opinions I had this year that I no longer believe. It's super redundant, the acting's horrible, and I've never actually laughed while watching it. I've been converted. Honestly, I think it's pretty funny and well-written. Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. The World Cup changed my opinion on this. It's not even close anymore. Corn is an abomination of a vegetable, just terrible all around. I think cornbread is pretty solid, and so I don't want to disparage it by lumping it into corn, but that's okay, because Chinese food is pretty mid anyways. Chinese food can be good if done right, and I do kind of enjoy lo mein and dumplings. But actually, the recent stuff is garbage, so DC has a real chance of taking over soon. Between Black Adam bombing and then all of the delays and recasting, the only thing worth watching in the DC universe is Batman. Size doesn't matter. It's all about perspective. Apparently it does. Or so I've been told. From a friend. You get it. According to science, this is what age you'll peak at for everything throughout your life. So the most attractive age for a woman is 20, while women seem to find men increasingly attractive as they age, maxing out at 48. 48 is also coincidentally the age when men will make the most money. Regardless of attraction though, 26 is the ideal age to find a partner for marriage, and 27 to conceive children. Strength peaks around 25 years old, so make sure you're at the gym when you're young to optimize your physique. Interestingly though, you'll have the most body confidence when you're 77 years old. 18-year-olds have the highest brain processing power of any age, but 8-year-olds are actually the best at learning new languages. Your emotional intelligence and empathy peaks at 60, along with your vocabulary and arithmetic skills. 23-year-olds have the highest life satisfaction, but the age when it will be the happiest, by a long shot, is 69. Nice. Should these companies redesign their logos? It's definitely softer, kind of like the Airbnb color scheme. I'm a fan though, gotta evolve eventually. This should be a no-brainer, it literally makes a D. And you kind of retain the alien thing if you turn your head a bit. No. Put her back in the circle. Ooh, going simplistic like Apple. This would be good for them in the West since all our tech companies are simplistic, so probably yeah. It's cool, but the current logo is so simple and smooth, I love it. You know what, that's a great redesign because it has that little comic book flip to retain its nature. Also, Marvel's reputation is kind of plummeting, so this would be good for them to regain the public. No, too techy. Makes it feel like lab food with that logo. Kind of an oxymoron to modernize an oil and gas company logo, but doesn't look too terrible. And KFC. I mean, if chicken was Bluetooth, then maybe. Otherwise, no. Which of these is more painful? I've heard that kidney stones hurt more than childbirth and getting kicked in the ball, so apparently it's the worst pain imaginable. Burning the roof of your mouth, because it has like a residual effect. If you burn your mouth, food's ruined for the rest of the day. I've actually never gotten a paper cut, but no way it's worse than a splinter. I guess they both kind of come from the same place, though. I briefly had sciatica from squatting, and I legitimately couldn't move for like two weeks, so it must be worse. Getting stabbed is like more intimate, so you probably feel it a lot more. Getting shot is fast, so you probably just like can't process what's happening. Ingrown hairs that form into pimples make me want to die, so probably that. I chipped my tooth eating a chicken cutlet once, and I actually didn't feel it. Needles don't hurt either though, so I'd say neither of them. Then lastly, gotta have your Wi-Fi going. If you get left on red, she didn't deserve you anyways. Do you prefer these kids' foods or adult foods? Let's be real, grilled cheese is mid. Unless it's made like in that movie Chef, then it could be amazing. Chicken Club just has like more body to it. Mac and cheese is like the grilled cheese of pasta, so mid. Fettuccine's godsend, so definitely that. It's weird because I only really like mini hot dogs, so I guess size does matter. I guess I'll go sausage though, overall. Not really a fan of either, but those biscuit things are like for 90 year olds. Reminds me of retirement homes. Those potato smiles are trash. I remember they used to serve those for school lunch and I would just always hate getting it. Sweet potato fries are arguably better than normal fries too. Avocado toast is great, but I don't think anything beats a PB&J. The hack is to toast the bread too and to like cut into triangles. My girlfriend loves tiramisu, I just can't really get into it, so definitely s'mores. And then tenders or grilled chicken, ooh. I guess grilled chicken because you can do more with it. How much will kill you? Well, it takes about 70 cups of coffee to ingest enough caffeine to trigger cardiac arrest, but you'd actually die by about the 25th cup because it takes just 6 liters of liquid to cause brain swelling and kill you. Speaking of liquid, 6 minutes submerged underwater is enough to take your life, but don't go too far above sea level because at around 26,000 feet, you'll die from a lack of oxygen. Sorry tall people, but for every inch above 5 feet, it's thought to take 1.3 years off of your life, 
and 13 consecutive shots of alcohol will take your entire life from you. 20 apples contain enough cyanide to kill you, as do 3 cherry pits, so make sure to spit and not swallow. 40 degrees Celsius will kill you from dehydration, while negative 21 degrees Celsius will kill you from hypothermia. And then finally, 185 decibels of sound can create enough air pressure to burst your lungs or shock your heart. Here's an example of what that would sound like. Pretty cool, right? At what age would you let your kids do these things? Get piercings or tattoos? I know little girls get their ears pierced when they're like one month old. Tattoos though is like easily 18, because it's permanent, so it would need to be their own decision. Wear makeup. Well, I don't think my boy would want to wear makeup, and my girl, maybe like high school? I don't know, I'd let my wife decide that. Use the public restroom alone? I think like nine's a solid age for this. Nine-year-olds are like capable to use the bathroom, right? I have a credit card. My kids will get a credit card out the womb to start building their credit. No reason not to. Skip school. I think if they're doing well in school, then I don't really care. So like seven? They'd learn more in their day off with me than school anyways. Take public transport alone. No, I don't think so. I see way too much stuff about trafficking recently, so I don't think I'd let them until like 16 maybe. Maybe even later. And then stay up past midnight. I don't think this is terrible. Maybe like 10 on the weekends. How long would you survive these fictional worlds? Maybe like two weeks. If I didn't die from stepping on the Legos, I'd die of starvation because all the food is plastic. Gotham can't be too bad. It's like a watered down New York City. Maybe even safer, so I'd say like 80 years. If I'm being asked how long I'd last on the front lines of war, maybe like two minutes. This is honestly the hardest to survive in. There's like bullet bills and piranha plants everywhere. I'd say two days. I don't know how to build and protect myself, so I'd probably die in like 15 minutes. I'm a muggle, so I think I generally would avoid the chaos. Probably a full life. Our ancestors did it, so I could probably get by like 30 years and avoid them. Might be crazy, but I think I could coincide with the monkeys. Maybe like 50 years. And finally... Trek makes me feel safe. I think I'd live forever. Which flavor is the best? Unpopular, but I think every Skittle flavor is terrible besides red. I think sour Skittles are so much better. I don't know if I've ever had Fanta before. Is it good? I know orange is classic though, so let's go that. I think most people agree that Flavor Blast is the best. Goldfish is just one of the best snacks though. The best gum flavor is always something minty and fresh. Gum is basically like chewy mouthwash. Double stuff. I don't really love the Oreo flavors. I think they're all pretty gimmicky. Sour Patch is red, or blue. Basically every flavor but green is good. Who still drinks Kool-Aid? I remember making purple Kool-Aid when I was in like 8th grade and it was like a fever dream. Like I'm not sure if it even happened. Donut's a toss up. I think a good jelly donut is the best though. And then Sun Chips, hmm. I think you gotta go Garden Salsa here. How long is your attention span? Well let's find out. So to test this, I'm gonna play a video at the top of the screen and all you have to do is watch it. Starting now. Alright, so stay focused on the video. There's a stopwatch running at the bottom of the screen, so whenever you break focus, just make note of the time and see how long you lasted. So the average person lasts about 9 seconds, but this varies of course depending on age and environment. There seems to be a correlation between attention span and intelligence, so the longer you can last, the smarter you may be. If you're still focusing, great job. You're in the 99th percentile of people, and I'll reward you with something at the end. You might as well just finish it out now, you have just five more seconds. So I'll count you down. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, how'd you do? Do you prefer the male or female version of these logos? Not gonna lie, she looks like she cooks better fried chicken. And she's kind of bad too. Sorry, Colonel. No, this is trying too hard. She doesn't get me excited about real estate. Maybe if she had a mustache. Yeah, something about the mustache. I think I need it in my advertising. Definitely the normal one. Ooh, I think I like the girl one better. It kind of looks more like a key, right? I'll take Tony over Tori every day. She's kind of cute though, I like the design. Bic. I actually think the schoolgirl works better because I think of her more when I see pens. This doesn't even make sense. Like, why would it be a W? Wickdonald's? And then DreamWorks. Nah, you gotta keep the little boy. Here's what it would look like if a nuke exploded about 20 miles away from you. In three, two, one. 
So while the flash of light and piercing sound is crazy to witness, it actually will take about 10 more seconds for the effect to actually reach where we're standing. This is because of physics. Yep, so you'll notice all the surrounding shrubbery being decimated, and that will eventually happen to your skin and radiate you completely out of existence. Pretty cool, right? Everything you eat is a lie. So American cheese is legally not cheese. According to the FDA, it doesn't meet the 50% threshold to be considered cheese, and thus it has to label itself as a cheese product. Similarly, Pringles aren't actually chips because they contain less than 40% potatoes. Baby carrots aren't actually mini carrots, they're normal carrots chopped up and resized. Oranges aren't even orange. Most ripe oranges around the equator are green or yellow, and they use something called ethylene gas to keep up appearances. Double stuff Oreos don't actually have double the amount of cream, it's more like 1.89. Bottled water, namely Aquafina, is just purified tap water. Nutmeg is known to be a cheery holiday spice, but you can actually hallucinate if you take too much of it. And then lastly, Captain Crunch isn't even a captain. He has three stripes on his sleeve, which indicate his rank being a commander. Filthy liar. Here are some logos that everybody misremembers. So contrary to popular belief, the Volkswagen logo isn't a V combined with a W. There's actually a space in between to separate the two letters. Yes, Curious George is a monkey, but he doesn't actually have a tail. People seem to think the Ford logo has a straight line off of the F, but it actually has always been curved like so. While Waldo is typically hard to find, I'm sure nobody ever realized that he always walks around with a wooden stick. Pikachu, who we've seen a million times, doesn't have a black marking on the back of his tail. Well, at least the Monopoly Man looks exactly like this, right? Except he doesn't have a monocle. Kit Kat, the famous chocolate bar, never actually had a hyphen. You're probably thinking of Coca-Cola. And then lastly, the Fruit of the Loom cornucopia that we all know and love never existed. It was always just the fruit. Pretty cool, right? Should these companies redesign their logos? Oh yeah, I love that one. It makes the squares look like computer folders, which aligns with their brand. No brainer here. Does anybody care about Playboy anymore? I feel like they could benefit from a redesign. That's pretty cool. I like the original. It looks like the alien gained weight in the redesign. Time to reduce his calories. Too complicated. I love the existing one. What is with companies and the oversimplification of their logos? Like, why do they think we love lowercase letters so much? That redesign is pretty trash, but to be fair, the current logo is trash too. It looks like the iPhone phone logo. This would be the worst redesign in history. It goes against Monster's entire being of like energy and hypeness. And then TikTok? Eh, looks too much like an origami. Keep it untouched. Here's what it would look like if a nuke exploded underwater about 10 miles away from you. And this was a real test conducted by the US military in 1958 off of the coast of the Marshall Islands. It's pretty amazing to witness, so here we go. And there's more. So the water vapor from the second explosion goes about half a mile high. And interestingly, the military never actually deployed this bomb as it was surpassed by more efficient nukes. Anyways, before it splashes on you, I'll stop the video. It's the least I can do. Would you let your kids play these games? I think Fortnite has a pretty healthy community. Worst case, they'll be cringe, which is kind of endearing. I don't think kids play this. This is reserved for like parents and grandparents. I guess they can though. Oh God. Sure. As long as they don't end up standing Minecraft creators, that would be tragic. Yeah, Roblox is like top tier creativity and expression, so yes. They'll get unlimited Robux from me for Christmas. Probably not. I feel like they become racist from playing this. I think it's a good way to incentivize kids to go outside, so as long as they're safe, this would be a good one. Of course, this is a necessary childhood experience. I wish it was still up. And then League? No way. I don't want toxic kids. This is how cartoons look in different countries. So in Israel, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs exchanges meatballs with raining falafel in an attempt to integrate a more regional food. Food is actually toyed with a lot. So in Pokemon, while Ash and Brock enjoy this onigiri, in the American translation, they call it a jelly donut to appeal to Americans. In Lithuania, Garfield's patented lasagna is substituted with Kugelis to make the character more relatable. In the Middle East, the Simpsons removed all references to duff beer and pork to better align with Islam and local law. 
In this scene in Inside Out, we see Riley refusing to eat broccoli, but in Japan, kids apparently enjoy broccoli, and so they replace the localized version with green peppers. Zootopia undergoes multiple changes in this new scene, with the normal moose being replaced by a panda in China, a koala in Australia, and a tanuki in Japan. And finally, Sailor Moon gets depubertized in the European and American versions of the show, since she's 14, which isn't in line with our age of consent. Let's try to guess the age of these fictional characters. Dora, huh? She should at least be a teenager based on her adventures, but I'll say like 12. Seven? Doesn't she date Diego? He plays in a clubhouse with kids, but also he worked on a steamboat. And he's married, so maybe like 24? 27. Okay, you should probably leave the clubhouse. I know Mario's 30, so hopefully Peach is at least 18. Maybe 21? Okay, I think we're uncovering some problems here. Squidward's mid-30s, maybe like 36. 44, okay, kind of close. Waldo. Well, he's definitely an adult, but I don't know his backstory, like why he's always lost. I'll say 28. 32. Wow, get a job. Ronald McDonald is definitely a middle-aged man under the makeup. Maybe mid-50s? 58, okay, best guess yet. And then finally, Professor Oak. Well, he's a grandpa to Gary, so maybe like 80? 47, wow, he looks terrible. This is what a nuclear explosion actually sounds like. So listen up. So that first sound was the electromagnetic pulse interfering with the recording equipment. But since we're about seven miles away, it's gonna take a few seconds for the sound of the explosion to actually reach our ears. So it's a really great example of the mismatch between the speed of light and the speed of sound. And since we know we're about 11 kilometers away from the explosion and the speed of light is 343 meters per second, we could actually say with certainty that we'll hear the sound around 30 seconds after the explosion happened. Or in three, two, one. Pretty cool, right? This is what 500 million years looks like in just 40 seconds. So don't blink or you'll miss about a million years. About 50 million years ago was when the first primates emerged, and 65 million years ago is when the dinosaurs went extinct. Pangaea broke apart around here 200 million years ago. We have a big moment here about 400 million years ago when the first land animal emerged from the water. That was probably crazy to witness. And before that, we were quite primitive and helpless, yet still looking for the same thing that humans today continue to search for. Pretty cool, right? Do you prefer the original character or their redesign? They massacred her. She went from like a 10 to a 3 like that. He looks like every white guy in construction now. Which makes sense, I guess, because his name is Bob. The original's classic, though. This can't be real. What did they do to him? He lost like all of his personification. That's terrible. That looks like Dora as a Disney princess. You can't switch up Dora, she's an icon. Rare instance where the redesign is actually better. Red shirt and yellow hair just looks weird. She looks more natural now. Wow, she's a lot more modest. This isn't gonna sell any candy though, so I don't like it. Okay, wait a second. She's kind of fine. I'm on board. Pikachu, he used to look so plump and happy. I like him better leaner though. He's healthier and I care about him, so that's good. And then Shrek. When did Shrek look like that? You're about to listen to the loudest sound in the universe. So previously I mentioned how the Krakatoa volcanic eruption in 1883 is the loudest sound ever recorded on Earth. Here's a reminder. But the loudest sound in the universe is actually from the merger or collision of two black holes. In what you're about to hear, scientists converted the gravitational waves of two black holes, both 30 times the size of the sun, and converted them into sound waves. The event was 50 times more powerful than all of the star's energy in the observable universe. So here we go. Pretty cool, right? These are some names that are banned in other countries. So there are two names that are banned in Germany. Lucifer, and I'm sure you can guess the other one. Jose, one of the most popular names in the world, is banned in California because you can't have the accent mark over the E in the official registry. In Mexico, you can't name your kid Harry Potter, Facebook, or Scrotum for obvious reasons. Linda and Maya are banned in Saudi Arabia because those names evoke Western tradition over their own. And Sarah is banned in Morocco because it's too Hebrew. 
Tom is banned in Portugal because you can't use nicknames or alternate spellings. Wolf is banned in Spain because it's considered offensive. And Wednesday wouldn't fly in Italy because it's considered shameful to name somebody after a day of the week. In China, you can't name your child at because symbols aren't allowed in names. You also can't use Muslim names like Islam, Quran, or Mecca. J is banned in Switzerland because you need more than one letter. And lastly, in New Zealand, you can't name your kid Tallulah does the hula from Hawaii. Sorry, parents.